us open our Bibles to John 14 verses 25 to 27 and on Isaiah 9 verses 6 to 7. Starting with John, All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Isaiah For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let us bow our heads and pray. Our Heavenly Father and Gracious God, we thank you again for giving us this opportunity to worship you, to give our praises. And as we listen to your word today, may you see us with a joyful heart. Lord, may we always experience and demonstrate your peace in our lives. May you continue to protect us and shield us from this unseen enemy. We bring back all the glory and honor into your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kumusta na kayo mga kapatid? Medyo matagal-tagal na tayo hindi nakikita-kita at nagtitipon-tipon sa ating bahay-sambahan. Pero kahit tayong magkakahiwalay, tayo ay patuloy na sumasamba at nagpupuri sa Panginoon. Online, God has given us great opportunity to be connected to honor and worship the Lord. For the month of May, our theme is Fruit of the Holy Spirit and specifically, Peace as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We started in May 3, we discussed key to peace, having a lifestyle of prayer. And then the following Sunday, which is Mother's Day, we discussed blessed are the peacemakers. And there was an exposition of the prayer of St. Francis. Last Sunday, we discussed the things that make for peace. Ang panawagan to have pacifism and that is found in Christ. And then on the last Sunday of month of May, we will end with May the God of Peace sanctify you entirely. We want to experience that shalom that God is able to provide. Today, we focus on peace in the midst of pandemic. Peace that Christ gives us versus the peace of the world. Not as the world gives, but as Jesus Christ gave. Taken from John 14, verse 27, and Isaiah chapter 9, COVID-19 pandemic brought fears and uncertainties. It altered our lives and institutions. Nandun ang financial losses ng individuals. No work, no pay. Wala silang income. Mga driver, mga ordinary workers, and then ang mga businessmen. Wala rin pong income. Dahil nagsarado ang kanilang business for the last two months. And all over the world, nandun yung global economy is threatened to go to a recession. There is also a daily threat of being infected with this virus. And thousands are dying every day around the world. Kaya nandun ang pagkatakot ng marami. And then even our church buildings were closed. What persecution, religious persecution, was not able to do in terms of Closing down the churches, this COVID pandemic was able to close down the physical buildings, the gatherings of the churches. However, hindi naman nangangahulugan that the church closed. Nagpatuloy po tayo in our worship gatherings through online, uh, virtual gatherings, at mas marami pa ang engaged, involved ngayon. So, the physical buildings may have been closed, but there are thousands of house churches that have been established. And the Lord Jesus Christ is continuing to guide and direct and lead the church. How can we overcome fears and anxieties that are brought by COVID-19, by this pandemic? 
In John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. How can we have peace in the midst of this pandemic? 2,700 years ago, the prophet Isaiah prophesied how we can achieve this peace. If you turn to Isaiah 9 verses 1 to 7, we see how the prophet discussed about the coming of Jesus and how his coming will bring that peace. The two actions that we need to take in order that we can have peace are this. Appreciate the qualities of the peace that God provides and acknowledge the agent of peace. The first action, appreciate the qualities of peace that God provides, has three qualities. First of all, verse 1 and 2 talks that this is prevailing peace. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. The people of Israel, because they were occupied by foreign kingdom, were having anguish. They were having darkness and even death. In the same way today, people, because of COVID-19, have anguish, have darkness in terms of their future, in terms of what will happen. At marami ang namamatay. But the encouragement of God in verse 2 says, The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. It is overcoming peace and prevailing peace because it is so certain that the prophet used past tense to describe future events. Hindi pa nangyayari, but past tense na, natapos na. Because this comes from the Lord Jesus. Second, this peace is productive peace. Verse 3, They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. Nandun po yung peaceful abundance at harvest time. In the time of harvest, there is that great joy because we are able to get the produce of our labor. At nandun, kung merong kapayapaan, it will be productive. So napakahaliga, na sa panahon po ng kapayapaan, meron tayong kaligayahan because it is productive peace. Then, verse 4 and 5, this is permanent peace. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as in the day of Midian. God will destroy the enemies of his people. God will destroy COVID. God is able to take it away if he wishes to. Now we are praying that there will be vaccine that will be discovered and God can give the wisdom to the scientists who are trying to discover this vaccine. Peace is also permanent because every boot of the tramping warrior in battle and tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. So this describes the destruction of implements of warfare. There will be universal peace when Christ the King comes and reigns. The second action that we need to take so we can have peace is to acknowledge the agent of peace. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. We can see that in verses 6 and 7. It starts with that conjunction 4, which means this is the result. This is what will bring peace. And that is, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The birth of Jesus that was prophesied by Isaiah is the one that will give peace, the coming of the Son, the birth of this child. That's why in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, when Jesus was born, there was the choir of angels who sang, Glory to God on the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. Ang pagdating ng ating Panginoong so Kristo ang nagdulot at nagdala ng kapayapaan sa sanlibutan. Why is it that the coming of Jesus brought peace. Verse 6 tells us the reason, because of the characteristics of Jesus. There are five qualities of Jesus that I want us to see. The characteristics of Jesus, and I want to use that acrostic Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, to show the five characteristics or qualities of Jesus. First, He is the just ruler. The government will rest upon His shoulders. He is the one who takes charge of the universe. Hebrews 1.3 says, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. 
and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. We may have worries about rulers of this land, about people who are not reliable, maaring may issue ng uh, corruption, may issue ng competence, and yet we know that ultimately, the future of our lives and the future of this nation rests upon the Lord Jesus. There is a song which says, There is no problem too big, God cannot solve it. There is no mountain too tall, God cannot reach it. And then the chorus, If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my brother or sister, he will carry it through. Jesus, the just ruler, reigns, and he is able to take care of us. In fact, Colossians 1.17 tells us, Jesus is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Hawak niya ang lahat ng nangyayari sa salibutan. Hawak niya ang lahat ng pangyayari sa ating kapaligiran. Because Jesus, the creator and sustainer of the universe, is the one who is reigning. He is the just ruler. Ang pangalawa, Jesus is the exceptional counselor. He is called the Wonderful Counselor. Now, why is He the Wonderful or Exceptional Counselor? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 tells us, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There are three qualities of a good counselor that we can find in this passage. A good counselor, number one, needs to have that empathy or acceptance that he accepts us and he uh, relates with us. Now, Jesus can do that because he was tempted in every respect as we are. Sa kanyang pagkatawang tao, he was able to experience all the pains, all the struggles of being a man. He knew what it was to be deserted by his friends. He knew how to have poverty. And there was all the temptations that were given to him by Satan. The difference is, he was victorious. He was able to overcome all of them. At nandun yung kanyang pagdama sa ating nadadama. He is able to empathize with us. Secondly, a good counselor must have the ability to help, to help provide the solution. He may be able to empathize and understand us, but if he does not have the solution, what good is that counselor? But Jesus is able to help us because he has passed through the heavens. He is the infinite God-man who can help us. Now, a counselor may be a person who is able to empathize and accept our situation, and able to help us and provide solution. But if you have to wait for one month, two months before you can have therapy sessions with him or with her, what good is that counselor? The counselor must be available, readily available. And Jesus is readily available. We can draw to him with confidence and receive mercy and find grace to help at any time of our need. Jesus is available. In fact, we can reach out to him. Ralph Carl Michael composed this song, which was popularized by Elvis Presley. Is your burden heavy as you bear it all alone? Does the road you travel harbor dangers yet unknown? Are you growing weary in the struggle of it all? Jesus will help you when on His name you call. He is always there, hearing every prayer, faithful and true. Walking by our side, in His love we hide all the day through. When you get this carriage, just remember what to do. Reach out to Jesus, He's reaching out to you. Is the life you're living filled with sorrow and despair? Does the future press you with its worry and its care? 
Are you tired and friendless? Have you almost lost your way? Jesus will help you. Just call to him today. He's always there, hearing every prayer, faithful and true. He is walking by our side. We can hide in his love all the day through. He is able to take care of us because the third quality of Jesus or characteristic of Jesus is that he is the sovereign God. His name shall be called Mighty God. Though he became a human being, it does not mean that he is limited as a human being because he is still God in the one person of Christ. There are two natures, the human and the divine. And Colossians 1.19 tells us that in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. That's why when Christ was here, he is able to calm the storm. He was able to drive out evil spirits. He was able to heal the diseases. He was able to multiply five loaves and two pieces and feed thousands of people. Why? Because he is the mighty God. He is the sovereign God. After his resurrection, one of his disciples was even doubting. Did he really rise from the dead? Because Jesus said he has authority to give us his life and to take it back again. So he showed his power that even in his resurrection, he took back his life. And so when Thomas saw him and Jesus said, Thomas, touch my hand. Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. He recognized that he is the Lord and God. He is the sovereign God. He is the one that is powerful, all powerful, that we can rely on him, that we can trust on him. Now, this sovereign God is also a person who can be close to us. In fact, he is, he is called the everlasting father, which shows the kind of personal relationship that he wants to establish with us. He can be the ultimate father. So here is the image of a father ruler. As the father is the one who rules on the family, who rules the kingdom, who rules the nation. The Father is the one who provides, protects, and guides His people. As the ultimate Father, He has the personal and caring relationship with every one of us. I lost my father when I was only nine years old. It was a painful experience for my mom and for all of us as a family. We had a time of difficulty we had poverty, and that time I was ready to quit studying because I see the pain and the difficulty of my mother, and I told my mom, Mom, I want to quit studying so that I, I can help you work. But my mom said, No, don't quit, my son. God has a good future for you. And then she brought me to a gathering. And in that gathering, I heard a very good preacher who was proclaiming about Jesus, and he was saying, this Jesus is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. When I heard everlasting father, I said, I want to have that father. I want to have that father who will not die. I want to have that father who will take care. And so I came forward, assisted by my mother, and I received Jesus as my everlasting father. Since then, I have seen his care, his protection, his goodness, and his guidance. Look at me. No, I'm not boasting about me. I am what I am right now because of the ultimate Father who cares, who guides, who provides, and who protects. I thank Jesus that he is my ultimate Father. And finally, letter S, Jesus is the source of peace because he is called the Prince of Peace. He is the one who brought peace, and sustains that peace. In three ways, Jesus has given us that peace. First of all, he gave us peace with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We were separated from God, alienated from God because of our sin. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross, when he hung on the cross, he paid for all of your sin, my sins, the sins of the whole world. So that now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And he now reconciles us back to God. Our sins have been forgiven. In fact, those who receive Christ would have that relationship with God the Father 
that now we are the children of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. We have peace with God, reconciled with God because of Jesus. Jesus, when he died on the cross, also gave us peace with man. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 tells us, For he himself is our peace, who made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Now the Jews and the Gentiles can come together. We can be part of one family of God. And we can have that peace. If we don't have peaceful relationship with members of our family, with our loved ones, we need to have that recognition of Jesus or our neighbors or other people. Today, peace is still elusive in Jerusalem because they have not fully recognized Jesus in their lives. It's important that we have peace that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ in our relationship with other people, with our neighbors. And then he gives us peace within ourselves. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Before COVID-19, many people are also anxious. Anxious about our looks, shape of our nose, uh, the color of our hair, and we are insecure. Or we are anxious about our future, our food, our shelter, our daily needs. Now, instead of being anxious, we are asked to stop worrying about anything. In fact, it should be translated, Philippians 4 verse 6, stop being anxious about anything. Instead, in everything with prayer and supplication, bring our request to God. And Jesus who is our mediator? There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself for us. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus can give us that peace. He is the source of peace. He is the one who can give us that security. We can have peace in this time of pandemic because he says in verse 7, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. We can have peace in this time of pandemic because King Jesus reigns now, but not, not only now, but forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Jesus said, in John 14, 27, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus gives us peace, not the peace that the world gives. It's an inward peace. It's the certainty that we are related with God. It's a certainty that we have good life now and forevermore. It's a certainty of His protection. It's a certainty of His grace and goodness. He is the just ruler who provides our physical security and financial or whatever needs because He reigns and He is the ruler. He is the exceptional counselor who provides that emotional stability and help and sustains our deepest needs. He is the sovereign God who provides that spirituality and care and protection for everyone. And the ultimate Father, where we can be secure, we can have personal relationship. And our well-being is sustained by Him because He is the source of peace. But to do that, we need to recognize Jesus. We need to look up to Him. We need to surrender our lives to Him. We can say, all to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessings fall on me. Let's come to Jesus. In fact, if you have not experienced the forgiveness of sins and the right to become a child of God, I invite you to come to Jesus. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is inviting you to come to him so that you may receive full forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life. 
He loves you. He cares for you. He died on the cross for you. And if you would like to experience that, join me and follow me in this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for my sins. I'm asking forgiveness for all of my sins. And I'm, I am trusting you alone to give me eternal life. Do come into my life to be my Savior and my Master. From now on, I give you full control of my life. Thank you for giving me the right to become your child and being a recipient of eternal life. I thank you for your goodness. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. For those of you who followed me in that prayer, remember this day you are given now the right to become a child of God. Jesus is your everlasting Father. Jesus is the one who will take care of you, who will protect you, who will guide you. And He is the one who will give you the peace that passes all understanding. I want to also pray for all of us and all the other believers. We'll, let's bring to Him our worries and concerns. Let's bring to Him all of the uh, anxieties, all the difficulties that we face. And let's experience His power and His goodness. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and bring to you our worries and our concerns. You encourage us, you invited us to come before you and lay before you all our burdens, all of our worries. We pray for your protection against the infection of this virus. We pray for those who are sick already, that you will care for them, that you will protect them. Then we pray for your protection on the front liners. We pray that the vaccine will be discovered soon, that can be used. And then we pray for our future. Help us not to worry about the finances. Help us not to worry about our work or everything. Help us to trust you. Help us to look up to you. Because you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. What can men do? What can COVID do, do against you? You promised that you will be with us always to the close of the age. And therefore, surround everyone with your love, with your peace, and with your power. Thank you that you have given us peace in the midst of this pandemic. Thank you that we can be secure in you as we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way. The Lord be with you all.